If you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create awesome videos, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. One of the biggest challenges we face as filmmakers is location. Sometimes you're limited by budget or time and you can't get to a great scenic spot to film. So instead, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Unreal Engine's free virtual production tools to completely build a real-time 3D environment. This method allows you to easily change the background of your footage. It lets you have full control over the lighting, placement of the props, and the camera settings just like you would in real life. There's huge advantages to doing things this way. You're already seeing things like The Mandalorian in Hollywood utilizing this technology. Soon green screen's going to be dead, and this is going to be the meta in filmmaking. So let's talk about how we can do it ourselves at home using only Adobe After Effects and Unreal Engine. If this helps you, if you do enjoy, consider slapping a like on the video to help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more videos like this and let's get started. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start with in After Effects. We need After Effects to composite our footage together. Whenever you're removing the background of one scene and bringing in a new background, you need to pay attention to a lot of small details to make sure that everything is successfully pulled off or else it's just going to look unrealistic and ruin the entire effect that we're going for. Step number one in this process is to isolate the subject from the background. Now to give myself an extra challenge because I know a lot of you aren't working in green screen studios or you don't have a green screen, I'm gonna use just normal royalty free footage. So I chose this shot here for a very specific reason. Reason number one, we have things in the background which will make it easier to track. And that's a very important point. If you're shooting on a green screen, make sure you tape down some X's on the green screen if there is any camera movement. That way you can gather some tracking data. That's a huge part into step two getting the tracking data from this scene and bringing it into Unreal Engine. And don't worry if you're confused by any of that, we're going to show you step by step. So starting off number one, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my footage and click Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to select that duplication, grab my pen tool, and I'm going to draw a little mask around my subject. Go ahead and click M and set that mask to none. And we're going to keyframe the mask and just move through and move the mask over if our subject is moving around in the scene. This should be pretty simple. Once you've done that, go ahead and change the mask to subtract. So we've cut out our subject from the background. And the reason why we're doing this is because when we go in and 3D track this scene, we don't want the camera tracker to be pulling the info from the foreground. We want the camera to be pulling the info from the background. So go ahead and right click on your footage. We're going to pre-compose it and you want to click move all attributes into the new composition. Once you've done that, we can right click. We can go to track and stabilize and we can do a 3D camera tracker. Again, like I mentioned earlier, we need to bring the camera data from After Effects into Unreal Engine. Once this is ready, you can see all my little track points in the background. Again, you need to use a good shot for this. We have these chairs in the background that are sitting still. There's not too much motion, not too much motion blur. That's all a green light for a decent track. And as you can see here, we have a good track going. So I'm going to hover my bullseye over these chairs in the background. I'm going to right click and create a track solid and a camera. And that track solid is going to be our reference point for where the background is in the scene. Once you've done that, we need to save this tracking data. So the easiest way to do that is go up to file, export, and do a Maxon Cinema 4D export. So even if you don't have Cinema 4D, as long as you have After Effects, you should have Cinema 4D Lite, which will allow you to do this. We're not doing anything crazy in Cinema 4D. You don't need to know how to use the software. You just need to be able to, to open it up and then refile. We're going to do one more step before we go into Unreal Engine, and that is removing the background from this shot. So let's hide all these layers for now. We're going to go back to the first layer that we duplicated earlier, just the normal footage, no adjustments added. And what we're going to do is use the Roto Brush tool. To Roto Brush this out, we're going to double click on the footage so that we're in a layer, which you can see up here. We're going to grab the Roto Brush tool and we're just going to scribble and draw with the green brush. You guys can hold down Alt to change to the red brush and you just want to refine this purple edge so that it's fully going around our subject. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can refine it a little bit later, but for now, let's just patch this up. So you can move over to the next frame by clicking page down on your keyboard and you just want to go through frame by frame and make sure that this purple outline is around your subject. With the new update to After Effects, this should be super fast and easy. Once you get to the end, go ahead and click that freeze button. So once you've done that, click back over to your composition and you should now see your subject with a transparent background. So that's the basics of isolating our subject from the background. Again, I took the hard method, 
some people don't have a green screen set up. They can't get out to a studio, whatever. This works the exact same way, just takes a bit extra effort. So now let's go to where we saved that Maxon Cinema 4D file from earlier. We're gonna double click to open that up, again, either in Cinema 4D Lite or the full version of Cinema 4D if you do have it. Once you open it up, here's what it should look like. Now just to visualize the idea a bit better of what the 3D camera tracker is doing, if I click off this button, you guys can see, here's our camera, there's the track solid we set in After Effects. If I click play, here's all the camera movement that happened whenever they shot the scene. So that's all we're doing. We're just extracting that camera data and bringing that into Unreal Engine. And to do that, all you have to do is go up to File, Save Project for Melange, or if you're working in Cinema 4D, I think R21 and up, it should say Save Project for Cineware. Same exact thing, it's just a different name. So go ahead and save that again now we're ready to open up Unreal Engine. Now, if you have no experience with Unreal Engine before, I recommend you watch my last upload where I talk all about the basics of setting up the camera, the sequencer, lighting, etc. To download Unreal Engine, you just need to go to the Epic Games website and download the Epic Games Launcher. In the Epic Games Launcher, you go over to the Unreal Engine tab, and from there, you can download Unreal Engine for free, and we can launch the latest version. So I'm going to go to the Film and Video tab, create a blank project here, and start it up. So once you have Unreal Engine open, once you're ready to go, you want to go up to Edit, Plugins, and there's two plugins we need to enable. The first one is the Cineware plugin. Go ahead and just search Cineware and add in that Datasmith C4D Cineware import. Check that on. And the second one is the Image Plane plugin. Go ahead and just search for the keywords Image Plane. Check that on. And then you're going to need a restart for those plugins to be enabled. So go ahead and restart the engine. So now that we are back up and running, our plugins are enabled, we can click this little button here, go down to import assets, datasmith, and file import. Now we can find that file that we saved from Cinema 4D Lite. Here's mine. I'll go ahead and click open and then OK. So now our 3D camera track is within Unreal. And to actually see that, what you're going to see here is it created a few folders for you. You want to go over to the animations folder that it created, and then you want to double click on this level sequence that it has right here. And here is all our tracking data from After Effects. If you guys want to see from the camera view, you can click on that little camera lock button next to 3D camera tracker. And if you click play, here's the exact same camera movement from our shot. If you guys don't want to use that method, maybe you don't like Cinema 4D, you can always use the video that I've linked below to export the camera data from After Effects to Blender, and then you can bring it from Blender to Unreal. That's also an option available to you. So either way, what we can do now, we can select the Datasmith actor and we can rearrange it in the scene. Maybe you created a ground plane when you were tracking and you want to properly align that to the ground. In my case, I'm going to just turn it at a 90 degree angle and make the camera a little bit closer to our normal ground plane. So now let's bring in our footage as an actual reference so that we can see our subject while we're building that background around him. And to do that, we need to go back over to After Effects and just reopen that project we are working in. Again, remember I used the roto brush to remove the background from our subject. So once you have it ready at that stage, you just want to go up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Under Output Module, click here, and we want to export this as a PNG sequence. Also, very important, make sure under Channels, you click the drop down and change it to RGB plus Alpha. That way it'll export with that transparent background. And then go ahead and just create a folder where you'd like to export this name it and click render. And if we go over to the folder that we just created, you guys can see each of the frames from our PNG sequence starting to be rendered out. So we'll go ahead and let that cook up for a bit and we'll pop back over to Unreal Engine once it's ready. All right, so once your PNG sequence is ready, back in Unreal Engine, you wanna go up to Window and you wanna open up the Place Actors window. We can search for the image plate. Remember we enabled that as a plugin earlier. Go ahead and search for one of those and drag it into your scene. And we want to link this up with our camera. You just need to drag it in your outliner over top of the 3D track camera. So just like this, and you'll see those purple lines popping up. So if we click on the 3D track camera in the sequencer to the actual camera view, let's just align this image plate a little bit better. So select it, go down to the general transform settings and go ahead and just reset these values if you need to. So we have that all set up and ready to go. Now we need to replace the image plate with our PNG sequence. So I learned this setup from this channel here. I'm gonna leave the link down below. Great channel for a bunch of Unreal Engine 5 tricks. Highly recommend you check him out. What I'm gonna do is open up my content browser and go back to that animations folder from before. I'm gonna right click here, I'm gonna go over to media, and I'm gonna add a media player. 
Go ahead and check this on and click OK. Next, we'll right click and create a new material and we'll double click in here. You want to change the shading to unlit. You want to check on two sided and then you want to open up your content browser and drag in that new media player media texture. Also, while you're here, go over to the blend mode for this material, change it from opaque to mask. You want to click control D just to make a second of these textures. Go ahead and connect the RGB to emissive color. And on the bottom, go ahead and connect the alpha to the opacity mask. So save this material in the top left and we can close this window down. Let's go ahead and select our image plate. Make sure you're searching under all settings here and just scroll down a little bit. Under this image plate section, you want to find this advanced tab. And from here, you can find the applied material. So let's change this material to our new material with the alpha enabled. Now let's go back to our content drawer. We're going to right click and we're going to go to media again. And this time we're going to add an image media source. So this is how we're going to load in our PNG sequence. So double click on the media source. Under sequence path here, just click the three dots and you want to find wherever you save that PNG sequence that you rendered out from After Effects. Just select the first frame and click open. You also want to make sure the frame rate here is set to whatever the frame rate from your original footage is. So in my case, it's 25 FPS. And then we'll go up, click save and close down this window. So now let's link all these all together. In our content drawer, go back to the animation folder and find the media player. You just want to double click on that. And in here, you'll see your image sequence. Double click to enable it in the media player. And now you can see our PNG sequence. So let's go ahead and click save, close this down again. And we're going to add this media player into our level sequence. So go over to the track button here in your sequencer, click on media track, and then click the plus sign for media and select that image sequence. Next, you want to right click on the media in the sequencer. Go over to edit selection and under media texture, you want to select your media player right there. So just like that, we have it all linked up and ready to go. Now we can actually see our subject matter while we're compositing behind it. It's going to give us a huge advantage when it comes to making everything work correctly. So now all we have left to do is actually build the environment behind our subject here, render it all out and then bring it back in After Effects for more cleanup. So when it comes to building your environment in Unreal Engine, you always need to pay attention to the lighting. There's a bright key light on the left side of his face. Other than that, not too much going on. Obviously, with the lighting that we have here, you don't want to place this footage in something like a desert environment because it's not going to composite together too well. So my best advice here is just to build an environment around what you're already given. And in this case, it's pretty simple. You have one key light on the face. We can pretty much put him in anywhere. You guys can right click in your content bin, go up to add Quixel content, and you guys can use any of these amazing mega scans, which come free with Unreal Engine to build your own custom environment. We talked about that in my last tutorial where we talk all about making music videos in Unreal Engine. You guys can, of course, use any of the foliage tools. You can use any tutorial out there on building any custom environment that you may want. Now, of course, if you feel a bit limited, you guys can browse the Unreal Engine marketplace. Just go back to the Epic Game Store, go over to Marketplace. They have free for the month, which I've picked up a bunch of amazing modular packs or environments from there. Or if you're looking for something very specific, you guys can, of course, search through here. So I'm going to go with this alien world pack. Let's go ahead and create a cool looking alien esque landscape. So it's very simple, basically just dragging our assets around and placing them in the background. Everything comes in our folders, so we can literally just drag it into the scene, play with the scale, play with the transformation. Once we have a basic little setup going on here with our environment and some of these background props, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some rectangular lighting, uh, maybe even a height fog. Again, you can do all that just by clicking window, opening up that place actors window and searching for whatever you need. So we have some fog. We have some nice lighting, which I'm going to position in the background here just to just to sort of mimic the conditions from our original shot, which is, again, key when it comes to making these two work together. Now, another thing you can do, which can add a lot more realism, you guys can go down your sequencer and find that 3D camera tracker and just open up the drop down here. On the right, you're going to see all of these camera settings. You can change those around just like you could with the camera in real life. So, for example, if you want to blur the background a bit, you guys can go ahead and change your aperture. Let's lower this down to like a 1.8 instead of an 8. And then let's go down to the manual focus distance and just crank that value around a bit. You can use this debug here to see where the focus is really targeting or just use the eyedropper to give our background some nice realistic blur. 
So once you guys are ready to export this out and bring it back into After Effects for your color grading, your final cleanup, for some reason it doesn't let you export it as is. You want to click in your sequencer to create this camera cuts here, and then you can click this plus sign and assign it to the 3D camera track. So we don't need the other Cine camera actor that it automatically creates. We can go ahead and just delete that. And then again, click this button to lock into our 3D camera tracks, just like that. So we're ready to go. You guys can delete the track solid and you can even hide the actual image plane that we are using just as a reference. We only need the background because we're gonna add in our actual footage back from After Effects. So go ahead and click your render button. I'm using the Media Queue plugin. You guys can go up to edit plugins and enable that. We talked about that again in my last tutorial. From here, I'm just going to export this as a PNG sequence. I'll set my output here and set a folder where I'd like to output all the images. And then we'll click render local. So there we go. We have our render kicking off. Once this is done, we can go back into After Effects. Let's go ahead and right click in our project bin and import multiple files and then find wherever we specified in Unreal Engine for that export. Now, very important here, for some reason, anytime you import an image sequence, After Effects is always going to import it at 30 frames per second. So to fix that, just right click on the footage in your project bin, go up to interpret footage main, and you want to assume the frame rate at whatever the frame rate is of your footage. So again, you can see that in your project bin up here. Once you've done that, you can drag this clip out and it should fit with the rest of your footage and the movement for a background should fit the movement for our normal subject. And you can see how that's matching up if I just hide the layer from our old background and our new background, pretty cool. So one final step, and this is only for those of you who aren't using a green screen or maybe you are, but you still need some cleanup. You can see our roto brush had a little bit of trouble around the hair there. Now, instead of trying to painstakingly use the normal masking tools, you guys can use the refine edge tool. So to do that, I'm going to pre-compose this footage again, just so we have it set back to normal. I'm going to double click on it so that I'm in a layer, just like we would if we were doing a normal rotoscope. But instead of grabbing the rotor brush tool, I'm going to hold down left click on that and I'm going to change to the refine edge tool. From there, it's just like using the rotor brush. You just want to kind of paint around the edges of the hair where there's some issues. You'll see it kind of showing the alpha here, which is really nice. Just go through frame by frame and make sure any parts of the hair are painted over like this. Once you get to the end, go ahead and click freeze again, just like you would with the normal rotor brushing. And once that's done, you can pop back over to the composition and you see we have a much cleaner looking mask here. If you guys still need to, you can refine that in the roto brush settings. Thank you After Effects for even adding that in because it is a super useful tool, especially when you're going about doing it like this. So there you guys go. I think it turned out pretty good. Again, we're not using a green screen. There may be some issues on the edges, so it's not perfect, but I think this is a great result. I think the background blends in a lot better. And again, with the ability to build this from scratch, really create anything that we want, control the lighting, control the camera, there's huge advantages to doing things this way. That's why I love 3D and being able to incorporate that 3D workflow into After Effects. It allows you to do things you couldn't normally. And with all these technological advances and tools like Unreal Engine for free for the average person to get their hands on all those mega scans, there's so many cool things you can do with this. So if you guys did enjoy, slap a like on the video, subscribe, do all that great stuff. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.